Ladies and gentlemen, it's my distinct pleasure to welcome our guest speaker today, Gary Kelly, Chairman of the Board, President and Chief Executive Officer of Southwest Airlines. A 20-year Southwest veteran, Gary and his colleagues have built the nation's largest airline in terms of passengers and the undisputed low fare leader. Southwest Airlines is celebrating its 38th year, its consecutive year of profitability, and it's been listed among the world's most admired corporations by Fortune Magazine for over a decade. Southwest was also named number one in customer satisfaction by the Department of Transportation in 2009. Gary began his career at Southwest Airlines in 1986 as controller, moving up to CFO and Vice President of Finance in 1989, then Executive Vice President and CFO. He was promoted to the CEO and Vice Chairman slot in July 2004. Gary assumed the role of Chairman in May 2008 and President later that July. Gary has received numerous awards and recognitions including being one of Business Travel News' 25 most influential executives in 2004. He was named one of the best CEOs in America for 2008, 2009, and 2010 by Institutional Investor Magazine. And most recently, he was voted CEO of the Year for 2011 by the Dallas Business Journal and named to the President's Council of Jobs on Competitiveness. Gary received his BBA in Accounting from the University of Texas at Austin and is a certified public accountant. He's a member of the Texas Society, Society of CPAs, and chairs the McComb School Advisory Council at the UT at Austin, and named to the Lincoln National Corporation's Board of Directors. He was recently named Vice Chairman of the ATA. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me give a warm Wings Club welcome to Gary Kelly. Thank you very much, Dave. And uh, I'm also my 19-month-old granddaughter's favorite poppy. So that's, uh, <laughs> and uh, as uh, Andy Williams says, this is the most wonderful time of the year. And uh, Old Southwestern Airways is having a pretty good month. It's, uh, it's always great uh, to be here. It is a real uh, honor for us to be invited. So thank you, Dave, for inviting us back again next year. So uh, uh, we love being here. We have a a terrific uh, showing from uh, our Southwest uh, Warriors here today. We have several tables uh, full of Southwest folks, so I thank them. Uh, I know that it's a treat for them to be here too and, and be here with you all, but uh, thanks for all you do here at the, at the Wings Club uh, as well. Um, I woke up this morning, that was a good thing, and thought, um, <laughs> man, there are so many wonderful things to share uh, here in 2011. Uh, with you all, it was kind of hard to choose, and so I'll I'll try to manage my time accordingly and make sure that uh, Dr. J has a chance to ask some really difficult and in insightful questions. Um, but it really has been a great year for Southwest. I, I remember in 2009 uh, sharing with this group a uh, really tough year. Uh, I don't know that we had ever been more challenged uh, certainly in recent times than we were in 2009 but just how satisfying and how gratifying it was uh, to get to uh, December and, and find ourselves with a little uh, fourth quarter come from behind uh, rally uh, to uh, to salvage what was a really tough year so this year is a lot like that except uh, at the other end of the spectrum there are just so many things to celebrate uh, and I did I did want to share those with you all today. But first of all, 2011 is our 40th anniversary. Um, we started out uh, in 71 with uh, very humble beginnings, three, three airplanes, and uh, 40 years later, uh, again, uh, to be a part of uh, what I think is a, a great success story in America is just a, a terrific thing to celebrate. And we have. We've celebrated uh, in style. I go back to the early part of 2010, talking to our senior VP of uh, communications and, and culture, Ginger Hardage, is like, you know, we need to have something really big in, uh, in 2011, celebrate our 40th anniversary. And when I give you the list of things that we did, I think they went a little over the top, because uh, it's, it's been a big year for us. Uh, but we, every year we want to be better. Every year we want to bring new things uh, for our customers. Uh, every year we want to take great care of all of our people uh, and um, I think that we have uh, celebrated uh, this year in style. Uh, first of all, uh, we opened up uh, three new cities uh, to start off the year in, in March. 
And something that uh, we haven't done, at least in, in my, my CEO time, is we opened up uh, two cities uh, simultaneously, all in the same day, and it was a real treat. Uh, so we opened up uh, Greenville, Spartanburg, South Carolina, and Charleston, uh, South Carolina. Very warm welcome, very successful start. And what was really fun for us is we've been wanting to expand in the southeast, and particularly in, in South Carolina for many years, and just didn't think that we could make that work. And the way our network has evolved over the years, uh, not only did it work, uh, but it is a wonderful, wonderful success. It was a great way to start this uh, celebration year. And just two weeks later, we opened up uh, Newark, New Jersey. Uh, and of course, uh, as you all know, it's a restricted airport, slot controlled, and we were at the right place at the right time uh, in 2010 to be able to capitalize on some opportunities to uh, grab some slots. We did, we got 18 daily departures. Uh, so in one month's time, uh, we uh, added three cities. Um, and it was a great, again, a great way to start. We've been working on a replacement for our frequent fire program for four years. And it is completely different, it is brand new, and I will just tell you one person's opinion here, I think it is by far the best frequent flyer program in the market. And uh, we launched that on March the 1st, uh, and we have had tremendous success uh, with that program so far. It was all new, it was very different, uh, confusing to customers at times, brand new technology, so a lot of um, uh, transition pains to go through, if you will, but. All of those seem to be behind us now, and uh, a, another real gift uh, for our customers here at our 40th anniversary. Of course, the big news for this year was our AirTran acquisition. Uh, when I was here last year, uh, you all knew that we had uh, come to a definitive agreement to acquire AirTran. It had not been uh, uh, approved uh, by the uh, Department of Justice or DOT at that point in time, and of course, we didn't close until May 2nd of this year. That's a big deal. Uh, we don't buy airlines every year, and uh, it's a tremendous amount of work. Uh, first and foremost, it's just a, a lot of work to merge two employee cultures uh, together. And of course, uh, at Southwest Airlines, we treasure uh, our people and we treasure uh, our culture. And um, I think my report to you today is very, very strong. Uh, we've made very good progress with that. AirTran is doing fantastic, by the way, uh, in its own right. Uh, prior to us getting it merged uh, into Southwest. So I'll, I'll give you all a little bit more insight uh, late, a little bit later. And then, of course, um, on Tuesday, uh, we announced that we'll be the launch customer uh, for the Boeing company, uh, GE and CFM, uh, with the 737 MAX. Uh, we're very, very pleased with that. Uh, very, very proud of our decades-long relationship with the Boeing company. And um, I'm just personally very proud that uh, we're going to extend that uh, here uh, with Southwest Airlines for, for many, many years to come. So let me talk about the MAX first. Uh, the, um, the MAX order is for 150 uh, firm uh, aircraft beginning in 2017. We have a like number of options uh, that extend all the way through 2027. Uh, that brings us to a total number of firm uh, committed aircraft of 350 with the Boeing company plus five uh, with the, uh, in the leasing market. So 355 firm aircraft between now and 2022. And then on top of that, we have a total number of options uh, outstanding of 242 aircraft. And the way to think about this is between now and the early 2020s, the 355 firm orders will essentially be replacement aircraft for uh, airplanes that we intend to retire from our fleet. We were comfortable with making that kind of a commitment. We have a fleet today of 698 aircraft, which makes us not necessarily by, uh, by, our, by our goal, but it makes us one of the largest aircraft fleets uh, in the world. So the way to think about our option airplanes is we have 242 options that are there for Southwest to grow. Uh, and obviously that's, uh, that's my hope, my desire that we can grow this airline more. Uh, I can certainly tell you that we see route opportunities to grow Southwest Airlines uh, in that neighborhood. We've got to hit our profit targets. We've got to hit our uh, rates of return uh, targets. Uh, and once we do, uh, we've got places and we've got airplanes. 
Um, let me talk a little bit about um, all new rapid rewards. Uh, the whole idea with our all new rapid rewards program was to reduce the restrictions and make it more appealing to more customers, and particularly customers in uh, mid to longer haul markets. If you look at where the industry has evolved over uh, 40 years, we have less short haul travelers today than uh, certainly 20 years ago. We have more demand uh, in the domestic industry in long haul. So where our, our previous rewards program did not align well with that. It did not align well with where our expansion is heading uh, and did not align well with uh, where we're trying to uh, position Southwest to grow in the future. So we made uh, all those changes. Uh, now you get credit for the money that you spend. Uh, there are absolutely no seat restrictions uh, and I think it works very, very well. And the response, of course, has been outstanding. We've seen our membership uh, grow in one year's time. We've seen our membership grow by 50%. We've seen the number of trips from members grow much more than we had expected. The amount of money that our members are paying us uh, per departure, because they're rewarded now uh, for the dollars they spend, we've seen that number go up. Um, we've also seen an increase in our partner-related revenue, uh, in, in particular our credit card revenue. So we're seeing more utilization of the Southwest Airlines Visa credit card uh, as well as more customers getting uh, the Southwest uh, credit card. To put it in perspective, with our old program, we were not getting our fair share of frequent flyers or credit card utilization. Uh, so we've got a wonderful uh, uh, change underway there uh, so that we can achieve that. I think the potential there is hundreds of millions of dollars a year in incremental revenues, and we're well on our way to hitting that target. So very pleased with our new program. The second uh, major initiative, of course, is AirTran. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, AirTran's business right now is a, they're a separate airline, they're a standalone business, they have their own brand. Uh, as we speak today, there are no changes that Southwest has made to its route schedule. All of those changes uh, will begin in uh, 2012. But AirTran in its own right is doing exceptionally well as a business. And its unit revenue growth, while it's not reported separately any longer, is very, very strong. So I give a lot of credit to the former AirTran leadership, the current AirTran leadership. The uh, Southwest Airlines uh, Revenue Management Department has taken over uh, managing the fares and the seat inventories. They've done an exceptional job. Uh, some periods here uh, late in 2012, we've seen unit revenue increases at the AirTran unit of close to 20 percent uh, year over year. So I'm very, very pleased with how that's going. Of course, the main mission here is to integrate and merge AirTran into Southwest Airlines. And uh, there is a lot of preparation that has been underway for that. Uh, we'll get started in earnest uh, in the first quarter of next year. Southwest Airlines will open Atlanta as many of you all know, on February the 12th, and Southwest uh, uh, will open up with uh, uh, 15 daily departures and five nonstop destinations. Uh, so that'll be step one. Uh, we'll, uh, we're, we're working very hard to uh, achieve a single operating certificate with the FAA by March the 1st of next year. Uh, that will be a very significant uh, milestone as well. And uh, then we'll begin the process of physically converting AirTran aircraft into the Southwest livery uh, and obviously scheduling it uh, within Southwest Airlines. None of that has uh, begun and won't uh, again until uh, the first quarter of next year. Right now our plan is to convert 18 of the AirTran 140 uh, aircraft that they have into Southwest Airlines uh, in 2012. So the, even at the end of next year we'll still have a lot of conversion work ahead of us uh, in 2013 and, and 14. The um, integration of the, of the uh, route maps or the networks will also be launched in the first half of next year. Right now, again, we are two separate airlines. Uh, we don't share uh, any itineraries. Uh, and likewise, the, the frequent flyer programs are also separate. Uh, and those will be reciprocal beginning in the first half of next year. So a lot of new things. Uh, for 2011, but we've got a lot of new things uh, coming again uh, in 2012, so it'll be another uh, exciting year, and especially on the AirTran front. Uh, 
the third major initiative that we have underway is um, a 2012 deliverable, and that's bringing on the 737-800. Uh, right now, the vast majority of our fleet uh, are in the 700s and the classic 300s. They have 137 seats, all coach configuration for Southwest. The 800, of course, is a larger aircraft. Uh, we'll have 175 seats uh, in the all coach configuration with the brand new, uh, wonderful uh, Boeing Sky interior. Uh, so we're very excited to bring that aircraft uh, into our fleet beginning in the spring. It is very well suited for us uh, for longer haul service. Uh, so the 800 is certainly a step in the direction to acknowledge that that's where the growth has been. We expect to see uh, growth in longer haul markets continuing for the rest of this decade. We have 72 cities that we serve at Southwest Airlines. As you all know, we're all domestic. We're lower 48. But the 800 positions us very well for long haul services to places like Hawaii, Alaska, Caribbean, uh, Canada, Mexico, Latin America. So that is where a lot of these new places uh, will come in the future. Uh, and uh, we're busy, of course, uh, preparing Southwest, uh, not only with the 800, uh, but also to enable other uh, areas within the company to uh, uh, take on uh, those new, uh, uh, new routes. The 800s will um, next year, we'll have 33 deliveries next year. They are all 737-800s, uh, so we won't be taking any 700s uh, in 2012. Um, I believe all 33 of those will be ETOPS uh, equipped, so we'll, if we choose to serve Hawaii in 2013, uh, we'll be ready to do that. So a way to think about Southwest is we're trying to transform from the past so that we have broader sets of capabilities to make tactical choices about what new places we might want to fly, whether it's Hawaii or whether it's near international markets. Uh, the, the last initiative that I would mention, um, I mentioned to you all last year, which is we have made the decision in 2010 that we're going to replace our reservation system. Uh, several reasons for that. That work is not currently underway uh, because of the three uh, other priorities that I just mentioned to you all, uh, and especially now uh, including the, 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 uh, uh, the fleet uh, initiative that we have underway. Uh, but we do want to replace our reservation system technology. I suspect that we'll get back to work on that uh, next year or the following year, dependent upon how these other initiatives uh, unfold. It brings us all the international capabilities that we would need, plus some. Uh, it also brings a number of uh, customer service enhancements uh, in this day and age to better manage irregular operations, canceled flights, delayed flights. Uh, as compared to what we currently have, uh, and, and obviously for a company who is passionate about uh, customer service, we're, we're very interested to uh, get that additional feature. Uh, but it also brings some enhanced revenue management capabilities that we don't currently have. Uh, and that value to us uh, is also in the hundreds of millions of dollars a year. So we're committed to replacing reservation system technology. It's just a lower priority compared to uh, the, the previous three that I mentioned. Let me, um, let me switch uh, to uh, just give you a little uh, update on current business trends and maybe some uh, economic outlook uh, thoughts. We um, have been consistently enjoying very strong uh, demand. Uh, and really, month after month, we have been setting records, load factor records, um, unit revenue records, gross revenue records. Uh, and that's whether you look at Southwest on a standalone basis or whether you look at Southwest plus AirTran on a combined basis uh, compared to what we would have been on a combined basis before. So very, very strong demand uh, and uh, certainly no complaints on our part uh, from that perspective. Uh, bookings look very solid for the holidays uh, and as, as far as we can tell, these trends will continue uh, into uh, 2012. I think that's all of us uh, understanding that our view into the future is very limited. Uh, at this point in time, we have less than half of the bookings in place for the month of January compared to what we would ultimately hope to achieve. Uh, so barring some uh, uh, change in trends, um, right now we're, we're uh, looking for a strong uh, revenue environment. You break that down between business and leisure, we saw a very nice rebound from the uh, 2009 recession in 2010. 
uh, in the business uh, travel segment. And uh, that rate of growth, uh, a rate of recovery slowed uh, earlier this year. Probably a little too early to give you all any insight about what's happening right now, but I do get the sense, just looking at what's happening from a macro perspective uh, and also looking at our own business, it does feel like we're seeing uh, a, cont a continual uh, pickup uh, in business travel. Leisure travel is very strong. Uh, we want to be the low cost leader. We want to be the low fare leader. We want to be the, the airline that customers love because we don't nickel and dime uh, with all those crazy fees. Uh, and I think that th those are all very important uh, uh, underpinnings for why our demand continues to be good. So we're going to do our best to continue to serve the leisure market very well uh, by uh, having a, a low fare uh, and especially uh, having uh, uh, no fees. On the cost side, um, I'll complain to you all a little bit about fuel costs, at least compared to last year. Our fuel prices per gallon are way up. They're up 35, 40 percent uh, most of the time. Uh, at least prices have been stable in that we haven't seen a continuing increase in fuel prices over the past six months. Um, it is somewhat remarkable that uh, uh, we have effectively adjusted to $110 crude oil, if you use the Brent, the Brent uh, benchmark, uh, compared to what uh, we all thought uh, in this business uh, five or six years ago. So the good news is we are sustaining our profitability. We are continuing to adjust. Uh, there is a healthy revenue environment. We're not quite adjusted to $110 crude uh, to hit our uh, profit targets, but nonetheless, uh, we're on, on the right track there. So as best I can tell, the outlook for fuel prices next year uh, will, be, will continue to be stable. But who can predict? Certainly not me. Look at the rest of our cost structure. We'll continue to have uh, a series of one-time investments uh, associated with the uh, AirTran integration in particular. Uh, but um, I would just mention to you all that after 40 years, we are the low-cost producer, especially among the, airline, the major airlines. That is where we not want to be. That is where we must be at Southwest Airlines. We are the low fare leader in America, and we will work very, very hard uh, to maintain that position. With bankruptcies uh, at the uh, legacy carriers that now includes American Airlines, that cost gap has narrowed. And Southwest is in the position where we are now far and away uh, have the uh, highest wages in the industry. So we've got our work cut out for us to maintain our low cost leadership, but it is an imperative. Uh, and we have a goal at Southwest that our unit cost will come down over the next five years uh, and not come up. So we have our work cut out for us to achieve that. But you look at all the things that the, uh, uh, the wonderful people at Southwest Airlines have accomplished, uh, and I know that we can add that initiative and be successful with that widen our cost uh, leadership within the industry and be able to uh, grow Southwest Airlines in the future. So that, that will be our goal. Thinking about the broader economy, um, we like you are concerned about uh, developments in Europe, um, a slowdown in uh, China. Uh, at least what we're seeing in the U.S. Uh, I think is what you're seeing in the U.S., which is a little pickup in jobs growth uh, and a little bit uh, of uh, increase in economic uh, activity, and hopefully that will continue. But it is something that we're very, very uh, cautious about. And in the end, if Southwest is going to grow and create jobs, it's because we're more competitive. It's because we bring something new to new markets uh, that customers can't get from our competitors. And I think our country is the same way. If our country wants to grow jobs, it's going to have to be because we are more competitive uh, and because more U.S. consumers want U.S. products uh, and uh, more uh, can be exported. So uh, we're trying to do our part uh, to help the overall economy there. Uh, in terms of competition, uh, of course, the big three external factors are the economy, fuel, and competition. And uh, I think we match up very, very well. I've spoken about our cost. I think our brand is at a very, very strong level, uh, if not at an all-time high. Uh, our operating performance is exceptionally strong. A year ago, we were struggling a bit with our on-time performance as an example. 
and for a good reason. We were having record load factors, record numbers of connecting passengers. In very short order, we've made corrections to address our falling on-time performance. Uh, and this, this fall in particular, week after week, we're seeing year-over-year -year improvements in our on-time uh, performance, sometimes close to 10 percentage points. So I'm very, very proud uh, of what our operations folks have accomplished. Uh, and that uh, you'll, you'll see those results uh, when you see uh, our, our on-time performance reports. I think that's very important in thinking about the competition. We want to beat them at every turn. We want to have lower cost. We want to have better service. We want to have the best operations. Uh, and I think with the strongest balance sheet in the industry, the only investment grade credit rating, we're in a very strong position to grow and capitalize on opportunities, which I suspect we are going to have here over the course of the next 12 to 24 months. Um, again, I think we're in a great position vis-a-vis uh, -vis the competition. Our goals uh, today are, are unchanged. Uh, we want to be a great place to work. Uh, Glassdoor.com just announced that Southwest again uh, was uh, in the top 50 in terms of great places to work in the United States. We're very proud of that. We're about uh, we're the only airline that can say that we've taken such good care of our people for such an extended period of time. Never had a layoff. We've never had a pay cut. We've never taken benefits away. And now far and away, we're the industry leader when it comes to uh, compensation. And at the end of the day, if we can take care of our people, I think that's what we can be the most proud of. And when it comes to customers, again, we aspire to be the best. We want to have the friendliest people. We want to have the friendliest policies. We want to give you more flight options to the places you want to go. Uh, probably since 2005, 2006, Southwest has been the largest carrier domestically in terms of customers served. Uh, and of course, that is only furthered now uh, by our uh, acquisition of AirTran, which will boost our capacity uh, and our customers uh, served by about 25%. That is a huge statement, um, and we are uh, looking forward very much to introducing uh, Atlanta uh, next, next year to uh, uh, Southwest Service. And I think for our shareholders, it is very important to reiterate that we have uh, not changed our financial goals. We want sustained profitability. We want profitability at levels that hits our 15% pre-tax return on capital requirement. Uh, once we do that, we want to grow this airline and, uh, and drive a lot of shareholder value. We want to be low cost, we want to be low fare, we want to be profitable, we want to hit those, those uh, return requirements. From an industry perspective, uh, we're not immune to those kinds of issues. From an industry perspective, I've mentioned to you all, I think every year for the past four years, the need for modernizing the air traffic control system. I wish I could report more progress today there is very little to report, and I will simply sum it up by saying a lot of investments have been made by the government and by the airline industry that are not being taken advantage of. They are not being utilized. Uh, and so we are certainly not advocating that we spend any more money until we take advantage of the investments that are already uh, made. And I think it's very safe to say that our trade association is uh, very united on that front. If we could modernize the air traffic control system as much as we need the next generation of aerospace technology, if we could modernize the air traffic control system, that is the single biggest opportunity to reduce fuel burn, reduce waste, reduce carbon emissions that you could come up with. Uh, and we must make that happen. I would like to say uh, on the industry trade association front, the Air Transport Association is now the A4A, Airlines for America. I hope you all like that. It doesn't matter if you do or don't, but, <laughs> but I hope you like it. But if you, if you hear me say A4A, I just want you to know what I'm talking about. But I am very proud of the results this year. We have changed the name uh, to reflect uh, new leadership, uh, Nick Callio is the president of the organization, has joined us in January, is doing a fantastic job, he's built a wonderful team, uh, and, uh, and again, we need them, we need to speak with one voice, uh, and, and ATC modernization is uh, their top priority uh, as it needs to be. 
You know, the regulatory environment is still uh, very active. Uh, we all care about aerospace. We are overregulated. We are overtaxed. And we need ATC modernization. We need to all work together to make sure that we promote that agenda. It was disappointing to see uh, yet more aviation taxes proposed, uh, and uh, we're doing everything that we can to reduce the tax burden and not increase it. Um, uh, Congress seems to have a real affinity for uh, using the airline industry as its ATM machine. So if we want to be competitive around the world, we need to do what other countries do, which is support the development of aviation, support the development of travel and tourism, uh, and not continue to hang uh, more tax ornaments uh, on it. So I'll get off my soapbox, Dave. I wish you all a wonderful holiday season. It is always a real treat for us to be here. I wish you all the best in 2012. And thank you all for being here. Please fly Southwest Air. Gary, we'd like to give you a small memento of your time here at the Wings Club with us. So it'll be the next one before next year. Uh, and it reads, presented to Gary Kelly in grateful appreciation for your presentation at the Aviation Leader Series at the Wings Club, New York City, December 2011. Gary, thank you very much. Thank you very much.